Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Discussions on gear, technique, industry news, and interviews with the best in the business. Now, here are your hosts, Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. I want to welcome everybody this week. My name is Rich Baum, and I'm from Sacramento, California. I'm Brian Berkowitz here from New York. Yeah, and today we're we're gonna do it. Ask the guys, right? We are gonna do ask the guys. It's been a uh, two three weeks since our last ask the guys. We got a bunch of awesome questions, and we're excited. We have a question from overseas, from Europe today. So we're going global. Greece, how great is Greece that? Is I mean, great. I love that these uh, these social media forums can just take legs, and I've got people sending me comments from all over the world. So. I really like that aspect of this. Cool. So tell me before we get into it, what's going on with you? Busy week? Yeah, you know, it's busy. I think it's busy for everyone. I uh, I actually love to know if everybody's as busy as I am, but um, it's been good. The weather's perfect. All my shoots have been just great. A lot of twilight shoots. And uh, I, I might have mentioned before, I'm, I'm all kind of getting a little excited. I'm uh, going to move a little deeper into Sony. Um, I have been shooting the sony a6000 crop sensor camera for uh, several years and uh, most people know that i've been using that and i love that camera with the samyang 12 millimeter lens but now i am thinking of replacing nikon for my wedding photography and i'm i've already put the money down on the sony a7 III, which is the new camera and it, it i mean by all everything i've read it seems to be the perfect camera for me only 24 megapixels two thousand dollars and uh it's like this ultimate upgrade from the uh previous version so it's it's awesome really looking forward to it awesome that's exciting and you know i know you mentioned it briefly on our interview last week with hoodie that you put the money down but we didn't dive into it and i was going to ask you off the air about it but i'm glad you brought it up on the air so that's pretty exciting news you're uh taking a big uh, big step over there with the a7 III. Well, I went last year with Fuji and and I ended up not going with Fuji for several reasons, which I don't really want to get into, but uh, I've been looking to to stray away from Nikon and uh, this seems to be the camera to do it. And uh, now I've just got to sort out the glass because the uh, Sony lenses are not cheap and um, not quite the best, uh, not quite as many choices in my opinion as Nikon, uh, but I think they do have some viable lenses and I think it'll be a great camera. Really looking forward to it. Sure. And also obviously with an adapter, you can bring over any of your lenses if you need to. Yeah, to be honest with you, I know Canon has great adapters and great connectivity, whereas Nikon uh, religiously does not work well, does not play well with adapters like Canon. Um, and that's that's part of the reason I want to want to move away from Nikon. It's just too restricting. But sure. um, I... Well, I I was going to say, I had a, a Sony a7 II for a period of time, about two months, about a year and a half, two years ago, and I had the Metabones adapter with it, and it worked great. The only trouble I had with it that was the autofocus, when, not when I was shooting any interiors, but when I was just shooting like personal family stuff, the autofocus just was not quick enough. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, it's I, a big problem. I can't deal yeah. with that in weddings, so I'll probably go no, all native exactly. uh, G Master lenses, so we'll see. Yeah, for weddings, you're definitely going to have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what are you, uh, anything new on your gear horizon? Any new purchases? Nothing right off the bat. I'm actually, I think it's almost time to start upgrading my computers, unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. I mean, right now I have a, you know, a 27 inch 5K iMac and a MacBook Pro. And I'm thinking about unloading both of them and just getting a souped up MacBook Pro. And at that point, also just creating a little dock system for my desk so mm -hmm. I can bring it with me wherever I need. And then if I sit down at the desk, just pop it in, I'm good to go. Now, so can, you, thinking, can you run but, two external monitors on the new laptops? Because mine, I can uh, only do one external. I, I haven't done enough research, but I don't see why not. I mean, I know the new MacBooks have the uh, USB-C input, and that's the only input they have. So I think you have to get some sort of hub or something like that in. It has to do with the there. graphics card, I think. The 
Uh, being able to yeah, maybe someone else out there will uh, know a little bit more about this and can send me a message. But yeah. you know, it's just uh, it's just first starting to come into my head now. So I'm still at the beginning stages, but it looks like that's where I'm going to have to be headed soon. You know, and I do a little bit of video. I do a lot of drone video, so I'm shooting a lot of 4K now. So I need something a little mm. a little better that can handle that video editing. So that's that's why I think my next uh, my next big move. We'll keep us keep us and, informed and a D, on that. And a D four. That's uh, also <laughs> next on the agenda. You've uh, you've convinced me. I just have to uh, wait wait first and see what pans out with the computer. I I got to be honest. There's some days I love my D four more than other days, and like I I just can't get over and get used to the. Um, there's no geared pan, and uh, actually they they have made an adapter I think for the geared pan, but uh, it's just mm -hmm. a little different and. Uh, I think overall, though, it's it's unbelievably great. But uh, every so often, also the the knobs are are backwards for me, and uh, I'm I'm still waiting to get used to that. That's actually something. Also, uh, the Sony zoom, Sony lenses zoom the opposite way to Nikon, so that's a going to be a really big deal. Yeah, they zoom the like reverse the zoom. Yeah. yeah. So but when I originally. Anyway, <laughs> When I switched from Nikon to Canon 15 or 10 years ago, whatever it was, I had that mm -hmm. same learning curve, but you get used to it. Yeah, I will. I'm sure I will. Okay. Anyhow. let's. Uh, how about we dive into the uh, question, play Giannis's question and uh, see what he's got going on. Hello, Rich and Brian. Congratulations for your podcast. My name is Giannis Fetkos from ProjectSony.com. I live in Greece and I have a couple of questions for you. First question, how do you succeed that clean and fresh look on the interior design photos? What is your favorite Photoshop technique, except bracketing and masking? Which technique makes the photo stand out? Another question is, um, what time is the best time for shooting? And if you leave the lights on when you shoot, and if you leave the lights on, uh, do you shoot on higher f-stops to get that star glare on the lights? Again, congratulations and take care. Great questions from Giannis out of Greece. And uh, I'd, I'd love to know more about Project Sony. That sounds really interesting. But uh, Giannis, I want to I thank you for taking the time to send us your questions. And I think we can have some answers and some ideas. But uh, I know if you ask 10 different people, you'd probably get 10 different uh, answers. So uh, let's just start off with the first question. How do you get a clean and fresh look with your design photos? And I'm going to defer this over to you, Brian, because I like to come off as the guy. I'm just a down and dirty uh, real estate guy. But for the design photography, um, what do you find works best for you to get that really clean and fresh look or a, a look similar to that? Sure. Thank you, Giannis, for the questions. I love it. Four questions in one. Try to sneak them in there. And thank you all the way from Greece. The love is appreciated. Um, so clean and fresh look. Obviously, clean and fresh look is very subjective to what that even means. Um, but I'm assuming you mean uh, the very crisp, sharp edges, very bright. Um, I and mean, that's kind of what I picture when you when you talk about the clean and fresh look. And I think the simple answer to that is just good lighting. That's the truth. Um, you know, shooting ambient or shooting um, bracketing and hand blending or whatever it is. Um, and I do that very often and I find myself doing it more often now than I have previously. And that might just be because I'm doing more work overall than I have previously. So I'm just doing a little bit more of everything, but it doesn't have as sharp and as clean of a look as really good lighting. And to kind of go on what, hoodie said on our you know on our podcast last week i think light painting plays a big factor to it um he talked about that being that the technique he uses and when i do design and architectural stuff i also most of the time use light painting what i do i do a technique sort of similar to his but a little bit different instead of you know him lighting the base shot i i typically like to do a five image bracket, which was his fail safe, but I actually use that as the base shot. So what I would do is I would do a five image bracket, hand blend that, and then use that hand blended image as my base and then bring in my light painted images. So it's a little bit more of a process, but I found that kind of emulates a little bit more of that flash ambient look that we all go for in the real estate world. Um, and I think it kind of brings that into the architectural stuff as well. So I don't know if you've ever seen any of my architectural or 
design work, um, if you have in Brian Berkowitz photo.com, most of those images have that ambient natural light base. And then I just light paint on top of that. And I'll light paint with either a, a speed light, or sometimes I'll even use a continuous light. Um, you know, like the ice lighter, I have a, one of those knockoff ice lights that was like 130 bucks. Um, and it works really well. I use that continuous light, um, and light paint that way. So I think the key to just getting really clean white whites and, and accurate color and not so many color class and sharp edges and just an overall sharp photo is just good lighting. Um, you know, light the room. If you want to light the whole room, light paint, if you want to light, the, you know, the, the light painting, but you know, take a look at some of my work or take a look at the work from, you know, that hoodie shot last week. Cause I think you would agree with me, Rich. I mean, his architectural work was clean and fresh and sharp. And, you know, that's, I think what Giannis is kind of going for. And that's my opinion. I'm not sure exactly what he means with clean and fresh, but that's, that's my thoughts as far as what he's looking for. Yeah, really, really good stuff, Brian. Uh, some good ideas. Um, it, it is, again, it is very subjective. And when I think of, you had mentioned Hoodie's work is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I know so many people work. There's even this guy, Brian Berkowitz, that's really good. But um, <laughs> I will say that uh, when I think of the clean and just the look I would like to get, it's got to be Cat Elvis. Uh, just she has the, uh, the nice uh, lights off kind of a, a beautiful color palette. So it's really subjective. And I will agree with you on one spot, very important. I do agree that it takes a really good, strong flash shot. When I mean strong, though, I don't mean overpowering. I just mean a really sharp, poppy flash shot. And for me, I shoot a little different. Um, I, am, I am adding in my ambient to bring back the life to my flash shot. But I find that the, a good, well-lit flash shot that you could almost deliver um, in as it is without putting any ambient shot in there, uh, I think that's the key. The better you light, the better your end product's going to be. So I uh, think there's some great ideas there, and, uh, and I hope that answered that question. Sure. And I think everything kind of just plays into, you know, it, it's almost like a perfect segue into his next question, which is about techniques, about um, Photoshop techniques, except for bracketing and masking, which is kind of uh, uh, maybe contradictory because probably masking is the biggest Photoshop technique that any of us ever do. Um, but I think part of getting that clean and fresh look is definitely the post-production and editing side of things. Um, you know, obviously when we're learning, we all strive to get the best image we can in camera and cut down on the, the post-production work, but, you know, don't kid yourself and think that the editing and post-production is not as crucial of a part of what we do as shooting is. Um, and it's tough to say that when you call yourself a photographer and you know that you spend just as much time on the computer. Um, and there, you know, there are a lot of photographers out there like Scott who, you know, his goal is to get a good in camera and minimize the work afterwards. But, you know, even someone like that has to do some post-production work, whether it's verticals or just small contrast, there's, there's always some work involved. So don't minimize, um, some of the work involved from a Photoshop standpoint to get that clean and fresh look. Cause it's important as well. Very important. And it's, it's just developing. It's, it's gone from physical developing to Photoshop work. So it's all the same thing. We've always been doing exactly. it. Yeah. So let's go on to the next one. Brian Berkowitz, what is your favorite Photoshop technique to make photos stand out? That's a good question. I mean, there's a couple of things I do on every image right off the bat that I deliver. I mean... As far as tricks that are unused, and I think we spoke about this with somebody, maybe it was Wayne or someone, I forgot exactly who we spoke to it, but it was about, it was probably Wayne because um, we were talking about the darkened modes a little bit. And that is, you know, I know that's your uh, claim to fame um, is that, you know, the darkened mode window pull, but just I, learning, I didn't invent it. Wayne, you didn't invent it, Wayne but you, Capelli uh, invented it. I just that spread is the true. love. <laughs> but exactly. So you, uh, I just you ruined it for everybody. <laughs> I, you didn't ruin it. Um, but learning those layer blend modes, because I use so many different layer blend modes, um, not just darken, but just mm, so many different things, yeah, you know, there's, you know, I use the color a lot when, you know, I'm trying to get cabinets white and I'll put like a solid, um, solid white layer 
on top of my kitchen layer, for instance, and set the blend mode to color. And then, you know, the white, the, the yellow color cast cabinets will get white. And then you just obviously paint it out of everywhere else. So that's a cute little trick I use sometimes, but learning the layer the layer blend modes because there's so much stuff you can do with the di the different layer blend modes you know when i'm putting fireplaces into fires into fireplaces you know i use a, an overlay or a screen layer because most of the my stock fires are fire on a black background so i can use it you know an overlay or a screen blend mode onto the fireplace and it'll just pull all the black right off and the fire will just be there and i just have to resize it play with the opacity and kind of brush it in between the rocks to make it look a little more natural and you know 20 seconds Listen, i'm done it's pretty quick there's so, multiply layer there's dark and light and all different kinds of there's of so layer. many different things so so learn them sit there and learn them and study them and that's you know that's key to um you know working more working more efficiently and quickly and you know obviously that all plays into masking and learning how to mask properly and you know, there's so much information out there. I read a book probably f seven or eight, maybe even 10 years ago by Katrine Eisman, um, who I first learned about when I was a student in SVA. She was a teacher there and she has a whole book devoted to masking. Um, and I still have it somewhere. Um, but that's an incredible book. If you want a resource to learn as much as you can about masking, I know it's tough to go in and read books now with so much information available on YouTube, but it's definitely worth picking up her book and learning all about masking. Okay. Awesome, man. Good stuff. Well, my favorite is going to be darken mode only because it's just the coolest thing ever invented. And I, I, the day I heard it, um, I remember I'm driving in the car and I'm talking to my friend, Peter Lyon and Peter's out of uh, Berkeley and, uh, Peter's really good friends with Wayne and, uh, Peter just describes it and tells it to me. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I totally got the concept, even driving. And that, that completely changed, um, so much of my life. And I've had so many replies from my, uh, subscribers just telling me it's literally changed their life because it's just, it may help give them time, free time. And that, that helps them have a, a better quality of life. So that's, um, that's definitely it. Uh, dark mode and another really cool one. And it doesn't always work, but just for sheer coolness is gotta be content aware where you can just circle something and it will, with its algorithms, Photoshop will figure out what is supposed to be behind there. So that when that works, it's magic. I love it. The content aware transform or content aware fill. I think there's two different fill. ones. What do you fill? fill? Oh, okay. hundred percent. Content aware yeah. transform is also pretty. pretty oh, it, it is. Yeah. I've never used it. Yeah. So I think we've um, answered that. And, uh, I want to keep pushing on this. I just want to mention on the uh, the dark mode, though. It's it's not even just for the window pulls. I was watching a tutorial earlier today, as a matter of fact, and in the tutorial it was a, it was a tutorial on Lumenzia. I don't know if you're familiar with mm. it, but it's basically yeah. like a, a plugin that um, allows you to create luminosity masks really quickly. And I, I bought it to play with. And in the tutorial, they were putting in an architectural shot a you know, a guy or uh, a model back into the shot. And because the person was darker than everything else on the layer below, he was able to use darken mode and the person just popped right in mm. and everything else in the layer was, was faded out and, you know, it was incredible. So definitely learn the layer mass mode and uh, that's it. Those are the yeah. techniques, you know, I also, you know, I'm all my design photos. I actually always add a little vignette at the end. That's kind of my thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm why but i always you know like in lightroom a minus five or a minus 10 and i'll always put a little vignette yeah. just to kind of bring you know focus the eyes you know bring in the bring your eyes in the direction you want the eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part of the room so when you put a vignette the eye goes right to the middle of the picture which is usually the the most important focal point. So that is something vignette. that uh, i know wayne capelli is always telling people uh, the brightest thing, you know, back of the room to help you, your eyes flow through the composition. So great stuff. Mm. All right, cool. Mm. Next question. He asked about the best time for shooting. Mm. So I know with our New York weather, there's no good time <laughs> or, or bad time because it's just so sporadic. So Rich, why don't you tell me from a location like <clears throat> yours that has a little bit more controlled weather environment as mm -hmm. opposed to what we have here, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm going to speak specifically again from the uh, in the trenches 
down and dirty day to day real estate photographer. Um, I think it's it's key to where you will get to the point where you you really don't need to know, and you just have to be able to produce a hundred percent of the time. Um, that's why we use lights. That's why we have good cameras where we can pull uh, information out of the shadows and and really, uh, you know, I, I never shoot exactly at the best time of the day unless I'm doing something that is really important uh, or a design shoot. And uh, I just find that I like to start my day at 10 o'clock in the morning. And that is more dealing with I just I feel better at 10 o'clock in the morning to get going. Um, unless I'm busy, then I'll start at seven or eight, but uh, 10 o'clock. And I find that I will choose the best time to shoot the front or the back of the house. Once I get there, I'll look and I'll put that into the game plan. You know, I might shoot the backyard first, shoot the house and then shoot the front yard when by 10, 11, 12 o'clock, the sun's moved around. But I will say um, I just shot a, a solely an exterior shot for a magazine yesterday and I got the app. It's called Sunseeker. Do you have Sunseeker, Brian? I don't have Sunseeker. I have an, I have another app that tells me the sun. Let me see if I can find it. While this is so good. It, it was 10 bucks and I'm- I have, I have Light Track, it's called. Okay. Which essentially probably does the same thing. Absolutely. But it really, really works great. And it was able to tell me because I knew that the house front was facing north, northwest. And- through the Sunseeker app, I could find that if I went there at five o'clock at night, I would still have enough light and I would be able to have light on the front of the house. So that was a really, uh, that was something that I was able to time the best time to shoot that. Now, the other time I need to know timing will always be my twilight photography. And that is something that, uh, you know, I can go completely into the twilight the discussion, but I just find that um, I get there about a half an hour before sunset, 45 minutes before sunset. I then make sure all the lights are on. I prepare for the uh, the um, twilight. I also get in my head, I know all the shots I'm going to do, the compositions. Then I will start shooting as early as sunset and maybe get some sunset shots with the house. Then I'll go into the twilight and then I will go into the hero twilight shot which is usually the front yard. And that is, uh, I've come to the conclusion, it's about 13 minutes after sunset, uh, most of the year. So those are the times I will definitely make to shoot something. But again, for regular real estate photography, I just, I, I just don't even think about it anymore. I know that when people are starting out, they're really concerned about when is the best time. But you also have to really get a, a handle around, I have to be able to convince my agents that it it's going to be fine no matter what I do because I can't have um, my client dictating to me, uh, unfortunately, unless they wanted to pay me more money or I didn't have anything else to shoot, I can't have anybody dictating what time they think the best light is. Uh, it may be better at that time, but I just can't work it into my schedule. So I got to be flexible. Sure. And I agree with you 100%. I think twilights are the only time that you really have to be concerned with the lighting just because obviously a sunset changes so drastically from you know june to november where you're talking about 9 p.m versus 4 30 p.m whatever it is but yeah during the day it's you know if you're a busy photographer it's hard to concern yourself so you have to just be well versed enough to be able to go out and shoot in whatever lighting or sun conditions there are out there because if you're shooting three or four houses in a day you're booking back to back to back and it doesn't really matter you know where the sun is when um i guess yeah. if you have one shoot you can kind of you can kind of pick and choose um but you know if you're if you're booking a full schedule um which we're all aspiring or hoping to do you know you're just booking all day from 8 or 9 a.m or 10 a.m in your case rich to four or five or six so you can't be concerned about that you just got to go in you know see <laughs> no, where the eight, sun is seven eight point. nine or ten <laughs> i'm out every day yeah, hey, i get home at 10 30 10 o'clock at night so that's why i start yeah. at 10 no of course look i try to yeah. book all my shoots at 10 also but sometimes like um this friday i have my first shoot is at 7 a.m because mm -hmm. i already had a 9 a.m booked and I'm shooting over the Long Island Sound, over the water, and high tide is at 7.30, and mm. they, it's a drone shoot, and they want me to shoot at high tide. So I yeah. said, okay, I'm going to yeah. come out at 7 a.m. and get it done. What am I going to do? And Thank again, if it's, a, 
If it's a hotel shoot or a design shoot, I'm absolutely, and something really important, I will base my shoot off of the uh, the uh, timing, the sun, the daylight. But again, uh, I'm just referring to uh, straight down and dirty real estate. So. Sure. But I think with the hotel shoots, you know, they're usually a little bit higher paying. So you have a little oh, more yeah. leeway to reserve the date specifically for that shoot or even two days as opposed to mm -hmm. real estate where you're in there for an hour or two and you just, exactly. it's kind of like volume. You just need to get as many yeah. in the day as you can. So it's like, all right, I'm filled, uh, you know, my spots, my slots are filled at 10 and my slots are filled at two. So I have a 12 o'clock. That's yeah. when we're shooting. Does that work for you? Great. Um, and you just got to get it in there. Yeah, and everybody should get a get the app, get the Sunseeker or whatever app you get, because I'll tell yeah, you that really does track. Yeah. really does help you. And and I'll tell you something: every so often, you know, when you get a, an important shoot, you you can't uh, you got to really know because it's so important. Um, if you're doing a really important shoot for a front of a facade of a building or something, yeah, you know, sure. you got to make sure you know which direction. Yeah, the sun it's is. crucial. I have I have a client who's a landscape architect, so. All I shoot for him is, you know, these multi, multi million dollar mm -hmm. landscape projects. And at that point, I have to know exactly yeah. where the light's falling mm -hmm. because otherwise, you know, our scheduling is useless. Yeah. So, okay. And the, uh, the last question we've got is lights on, lights off. Uh, what do we do? Um, I'll defer to you, Brian, um, because, um, I do use this technique and I actually yesterday shot with lights off and it's because the house lent the, uh, lent itself to looking at that, looking in that way. But, uh, what exactly. do you do, Brian? What do you, I don't, ha I don't have a rule. I do something different every time and it really depends on the house for your general, you know, 1500, 2500 square foot house. I generally like to leave the lights on if they have them, you know, if they have hi hats or overheads, I, you know, sometimes I leave the lamps on like the night the bedside lamps and stuff, but those give the most horrible color cast as I'm sure everyone knows. Um, so I try to leave those off, but if, you know, if I shoot a home and, you know, a lot of these homes that I'm doing in the, the higher end stuff all have these huge natural light windows coming, you know, the natural light coming through these huge windows, I try to leave them off and just show that natural light. But, you know, I've kind of learned to shoot with them on if I need to. So I'm prepared to do either way. It's kind of just go into the house and feel it out and kind of see what the vibe is mm -hmm. you know if it's a you know if it's later in the afternoon if i'm shooting at five o'clock and it's a you know a cozy master bedroom then maybe i'll want to turn some of the lamps on and just give it that feel you know if they have a nice you know i shot a bedroom earlier today it was at 11 o'clock in the morning so it wouldn't really play into this so i just kind of left all the natural lights on but in the master bedroom they had a nice sitting room in front of her fireplace so if i was shooting that a little later in the day and there was a lot less natural light i think putting that little lamp by the sitting room on with the fireplace would make a beautiful shot and mm -hmm. that's where i would turn the you know the interior lights on so it kind of just really depends there's no i don't have a a set rule one way or the other i go and feel it out see what works see what doesn't work um you know kitchen i like turning a lot of the lights on. I like turning, if the cabinets have under cabinet LEDs, I like turning those on because those brighten up the backsplash. Um, but yeah, I have no, I guess I have no rule. It's kind of just feel it out mm -hmm. and, and see what I'm in the mood for and kind of what I'm feeling that day creatively and what will work with, you know, what equipment I have and kind of what works with the house, like you said. So yeah, that's where I'm going like that. But th for the second part of his question, before I let you um, tell us what you do, Generally, even if I do leave the lights on, I do not, you know, go up to like F22 to get that starburst effect. <laughs> I don't really like that interior. The only time I would ever do that, and I, I do that occasionally if I'm just kind of feeling creative, is maybe on a twilight if I'm shooting right into the sun and, you know, the sun, it hasn't hit sunset yet. The sun's like right on the horizon, but I have just this beautiful composition with like a nice light flare coming in and the sun's going right into the camera. And then I might be like, all right, let me go up to like 16 or 22, get a little starburst and see if they like this and just do something creative. If, you know, if it's a couple minutes to sunset and I still see the sun in my frame and, you know, I'm just kind of waiting there, then I would do something like that on a sunset, but never really interiors. I don't think I've ever done that or don't plan on doing that anytime soon. One of the funnest things about an electronic viewfinder, which is probably the main reason I'm going to mirrorless fully, is you can actually, as you're changing your aperture and looking through the camera, you can see the starburst change mm -hmm. real time, which is really cool. So you know what you're going to get before you take the shot. Uh, I sure. love that. 
Yeah, I mean, I a lot of times, especially when I do twilights, I use live view mode anyway, and it's you know it's not as good as the electronic viewfinder as far as mm -hmm. being accurate, but it's pretty good too. And you know, you get a good idea of yeah. how your final image will yeah, look absolutely. when you use live view. I use live view a lot if I'm not having if I don't have my cam ranger on me, or for instance, if I hit traffic and I whatever the case is, I don't get you know I don't have enough time to get the cam ranger set up on a twilight, and I just have to resort to. Mm -hmm. um, you know the camera itself for live view because i'm running out of time then i do use that i use the live view and it's it's not as good as the the big screen of the ipad but it, it you know it works in a pinch so hmm. great 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 yeah well if i'm gonna chime in here and uh, again i'm gonna take the stance of uh i'll, I'll actually go from real estate photographer to, to design photographer for real estate i think it's one important thing i want to point out to people that are getting into this game um, I think it's really important for you to set your style, see what you like. I mean, I always use the the uh, analogy that uh, if you look at Architectural Digest, you'll see that the lights are off in the majority of shots. And I think that's a look. And actually, if you like to shoot without lights, uh, that's a great thing to say to agents going, oh, well, by the way, uh, I love the look of Architectural and you'll notice or Architectural Digest and you'll notice that all the lights are off. So an agent might might be more prone to go, oh, maybe you're right. But I know a lot of agents want to have the lights on no matter what. And I don't agree with that. And I think it's important to have a really good understanding with your client that I will put on the lights when I think it's appropriate. I won't when it's not. Now, when you start shooting really, really nice houses, um, one thing that tends to go with these upper end listings, hotels, uh, you know, architectural design photography, um, people put a lot more money into their lighting, um, into the, the house. And I think that um, like we're shooting a house and there is a Chihuly, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Chihuly um, glass, piece of glass light, this huge Chihuly. And it's like, oh, yes, absolutely. You shoot it with, you know, you shoot it with the light on. But also, I think it's really important to get your ammunition, as I call it on my, my YouTube channel, uh, get your ammunition and really learn how to do lights on, lights off. So you're going to do maybe your ambient shot will have lights on, ambient shot, lights off, flash shot, ambient lights, I mean, flash shot, the room lights on, flash shot, the room lights off. That way you can mask in the amount of light and warmth that you want. Want. Because the main thing that I like to sell to people uh, learning this is you just want to have full control over everything you're doing. So you want to be in control of how much light you bring in from the windows. You want to be in control of how much color cast your lights are doing. And these are all really simple techniques. I've got videos on all of these. So you can certainly find information out there. And I think Nathan Cool also does some videos on uh, lights on, lights off. But um, again, as far as um, what is right, what's wrong, there is no right and wrong. Uh, I will say that turning the lights off or shooting without lights will actually help you a lot in saving time if you've got uh, rooms and spaces with color cast issues. So the main thing you've just got to do, though, is have an understanding with your client. You know, same thing with shooting too wide. You know, does your client want you to shoot ultra wide or can you train your client to it's better not to shoot ultra wide? So I think these are really understandings you have with the people that you work for or you work with. Sure. And I want to kind of agree with you in the sense that when I answered my my part of this question, I was referring solely to real estate and kind of what you said is true when I'm working for a designer who, you know, makes a con concentrated effort to basically, you know, get specific types of lamps or specific types of lighting for a living room, for instance, then I have to obviously shoot with the lights on. Um, if that's, you know, the, the goal of the designer is to show this space with lights, or if the designer brought some specific pieces of art and put some lights on top of the art, shining right on the art, obviously I put those on because that art's a focal point of the room and he bought these lights or she bought these lights to put onto the art. So, um, my answer was specifically for real estate where it's kind of touch and go, but in the same sense, so is design, you know, unless there's the designer specifically tells me, you know, I added this light for this reason, then obviously without even mm -hmm. thinking twice, the light goes on. And so. again, if you, um, have a specific layer with the light, with the warmth of the light, you can just put in as much or as little as you want. And that's the point to have full control. 
And the um, last thing I would like to touch touch base on is uh, Giannis also kind of asked, how do you do the, how do you expose for the lights? Well, this is something that is really important where um, the way I, I like to shoot is I will expose for the brightest thing in the room or the brightest thing in the composition. And this can either be the window or it can also be lights, uh, which could be a bathroom light. And I think you just have to set your flash layer. You have to expose for the light itself. Now, sometimes that could be, you know, you might have to push everything going to one two hundredth of a second and bring your ISO down to a two hundredth to really get your light under control. But and this is where having tethering or live view really helps because you can see what you are getting before you shoot it. But I just think it's important to don't be afraid to drag your shutter or raise your shutter speed, make your make your shutter slower. Um, I'm sorry, make your shutter faster so you can have a darker exposure. Don't feel like um, you have to have something else, you know, really take care of control of those lights. Awesome. Well said. I think we could have had four different episodes with all these questions, let alone get them all into one quick 35, 40 minute episode. But we, uh... You could certainly go on and talk about each of these things, but there are just, as we had four questions today, I'm hoping people out there, listen, be sure to send us your questions for Ask the Guys. It's a great way to say hi, get something answered. And also, you um, you know, you can promote, promote your business or have people come over and see what you're doing or what you're up to. Anything you can stick in there in 90 second question, you're more than welcome to uh, ask sure, the guys. It's funny because so we said it. before, if it's a question that we cannot answer, we'll bring someone on who can. And you know, Rich, mm -hmm. we are in the process, as you know, of working on getting some, somebody asked us a question that we're hopefully going to get to in the next couple of weeks that is beyond both Rich and I's, um, I guess, knowledge, if you want to call it that. So I've been in contact with a professional and I think we're going to bring him on to go over that Ask the Guys question. And I think everyone will benefit from that. So what was that question? Was on copyright and licensing. So um, oh, I'm right. working with a, a copyright attorney trying to get him on um, to, to do the Ask the Guys with us which will be great i just found somebody using my images that last week and i just went through this i don't go through this that often but i did make them take it down and i was very nice about it and i went about it the right way uh but it did something i i made a big deal of i said listen i, I appreciate you liking this it was a subcontractor from a design shoot i did and uh you got to take care of it so we'll have we'll have on the uh copyright um is he an attorney he's or is he an attorney out of I washington dc yeah awesome so good we can yeah, all learn. i mean it's gonna it's not gonna it's gonna be a few weeks i think june we're gonna record with him but something to look forward mm -hmm. to in the coming weeks and for that one person that asked the question it is coming and we have a special guest lined up to answer it so stay tuned okay wow what a what a what a question filled episode and i i hope we got uh, we got the right answer for Giannis. and thank you out there Giannis and uh I, I would love to go to Greece and see how you work. So maybe in the future, I'll look you up. Awesome. And remember, everybody, send in your Ask the Guys questions. We have a few left, but we are running low. So we need some more of your questions and we need to help educate as many people as we can. So don't be shy and ask the question. And like you said, Rich, you can uh, have the opportunity to just plug your website and uh, you know allow all the listeners to go in and see some of your work. Yeah, it's, it's really important for people to step up and and you know help us out with if we need content because you're part of the show too and and we're all here as a community so that's great and really everybody subscribe you know there's so many resources out there subscribe to my youtube channel do subscribe to shooting spaces join all the groups learn from the groups um and uh, you know it it'll get better it'll get faster easier you'll make more money and and i always say it but it's very true so don't set your sights on where you want to shoot in the future, uh, not to where you're shooting today because it's too slow and not enough uh, money. It will get better if you continue to strive for for uh, greatness and uh, getting better. Of course, and don't forget to also like our Facebook page. As we mentioned in last week's episode, mm -hmm. um, if we haven't done one yet before this episode is released, it will be any day now, but we are preparing some awesome live Facebook live content with guests, webinars, Q and A's. Um, I think Rich and I in the next couple of days, if we haven't yet, um, in the next couple of days, we should be coming out with our first one, um, just the two of us. Uh, and if you have any ideas for 
for some questions, be sure to shoot them over to us as well. Um, and then we're going to try to bring on some guests to do some tutorials, some webinars, some Q and A, some live stuff. And it's all part of um, the bigger picture we have planned. So we're excited. Yeah, really a lot of things coming up and we're, we're just trying to feel out the waters and, and the bottom line is just to uh, help educate people to uh, becoming successful. Thank you, Brian. What a great week. Enjoy your twilight tonight. You got a, you got a, we spoke about timing it right. You're probably uh, running low on time over here, so you better get to it. I am twilighted out, but no, I'm so excited and happy to do it. So no problem. And I just want to say thanks for everybody out there. Uh, really appreciate it. And Brian, I appreciate you coming on and uh, joining me uh, to do these podcasts. Until next time, Rich. Until. Adieu. Talk to you later, guys. This has been Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Subscribe to this show and don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow Rich and Brian on social media and at their website, shootingspacespodcast.com.